Good day all and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to be looking at the complexion video. That's our third video on redox reaction. And it's going to be on oxidizing, oxidizing and reducing agents. Oxidizing and reducing agents. Now, when we talk about oxidizing agents, we will start by looking at oxidizing agents. Now, oxidizing agents, they are simply agents that, one, they cause oxidation in a redox reaction. Then, secondly, they are electron acceptors they are electron acceptors and lastly they are reduced at the end of a redox reaction they are reduced at the end of of a redox reaction okay so these are the three parts that you need to consider when considering uh, the oxidizing agents. Firstly is that they cause oxidation in the redox reaction. Then secondly is that they are electron acceptors. Then lastly, they are reduced at the end of the redox reaction. No wonder, that's even the reason why in some texts, they will define oxidizing agents as agents that are usually reduced at the end of a redox reaction, okay? Then in terms of reducing agents, now, reducing agent has opposite definitions to this. Now, for reducing agents, reducing agents, we have them to cause reduction. So, they cause reduction in a redox reaction. And secondly, they are electron donors. So, they donate electrons during the redox reaction then lastly they are they are usually oxidized at the end of a redox reaction they are usually oxidized at the end of a redox reaction okay now looking at the classical examples of oxidizing agents we have examples such as the KM, KMNO4 solution, we also have the K2CR2O7 solution, then we also have the concentrated nitric acid, we also have hot concentrated sulfuric acid, H2SO4, then we also have chlorine, then uh, we have uh, non-metals, non-metals and metallic ions to also function as uh, oxidizing agents, okay? Then in the case of reducing agents, we have uh, classical examples of reducing agents include we have complex hydrates such as the lithium tetra hydroalumine 3 then we also have the sodium tetra hydroborate 3 and then we also have uh, hydrogen sulfide we have ion 2 chloride solution then we also have uh, metals metals and non metallic ions metals and non metallic ions they, are, they also function as reducing agents. And then again, we also have uh, even sulfur oxide. Yeah, sulfur oxide can also be an example of oxidizing agents. So it means that we still have sulfur oxide acting as an oxidizing agent as well as a reducing agent. So it means there are some agents that can function as both oxidizing and reducing. Okay, so how does um, sulfur oxide function as an oxidizing agent or when does it function as an oxidizing agent? Now listen, sulfur oxide functions as an oxidizing agent in the presence of a stronger reducing agent. 
and functions as a reducing agent in the presence of a stronger oxidizing agent. Okay, now that's all about the definition of oxidizing and reducing agents. Now, the next that we are about looking at is on the test. The test for oxidizing and reducing agents. The test for oxidizing and reducing agents. Test for oxidizing and reducing agents. Now you have to pay attention. To test for the presence of an oxidizing agent, you use a reducing agent. Then also, to test for the presence of a reducing agent, you use an oxidizing agent. So that's how you test for both of them, okay? But meanwhile, when testing for an oxidizing agent, it is not all reducing agents that can be best used. The only set of reducing agents that can be used um, to test for oxidizing agents are simply reducing agents that undergo color changes when they are reacted with oxidizing agents and vice versa. Meaning, when you want to test for reducing agents, you should use oxidizing agents that usually undergo color changes in order for you to know that indeed there is a presence of a reducing agent. So, firstly, we are going to look at the test for oxidizing agents. The test for oxidizing agents. The first uh, reducing agent that we work with would be um, the use of ion two chloride solution. Now, this solution, ion two chloride, if it is placed in a beaker and you have FeCl2 in this beaker, now the color of this uh, solution is greenish. So, this is what happens. When you turn an oxidizing agent into this solution, it changes the color from green to brown. And what, what really occurs here is that in this solution, the ion, two ion, is what gives this solution its greenish color. So this is what happens. Now when you add an oxidizing agent, it oxidizes this ion, two ion, into ion, three ion. And remember I said there is this ion, two ion that gives that solution greenish color. So when it is being oxidized, it turns ion 3 ion and the color of ion 3 ion is brown. Okay, so that's what happens there. So it changes the color of the solution from green to brown. Then you can use another reducing agent that's the use of hydrogen sulfide gas. Now, when you use this hydrogen sulfide gas, what happens is this let's say in a container containing an oxidizing agent. OA. And then you actually connect, uh, let's say, a delivery pipe. And then you deliver your hydrogen sulfide into this. This is what happens. Let's say here is sealed. This is what happens. The moment hydrogen sulfide gas is delivered into this oxidizing agent, what happens? You discover that there will be the formation of a yellowish substance here. And that yellowish substance is known as sulfur. So there will be sulfur deposits that will be formed in the process. So look at what happens. Now, this hydrogen sulfide, when you split, it gives you H plus and S2 minus. Because, of course, you know that these two came down here while this one didn't affect it. So it forms this H2S. So this sulfide ion, in this case, is actually colorless. Okay, so this solution is colorless. All right, that's the gas. The gas itself is what is colorless. So what happens? The moment you react it with an oxidizing agent, it tends to oxidize this sulfur, uh, sulfur, uh, sulfide ion into sulfur. And then it ends up giving you something like this. S2 minus to give S. And remember that the oxidation state of an element in its free state is what? Zero. So this substance has been oxidized okay and then this remains colorless remember while this one is what is yellowish so it gives a yellowish deposit of sulfur confirming that you have just worked with 
and oxidizing agent. So that's how you test for the presence of oxidizing agent. Then testing for the presence of reducing agents. The presence of reducing agents. You use oxidizing agents that undergo color changes. So the test for reducing agents. Reducing agents. You work with these solutions. Acidified, acidified KMNO4 solution. And of course, what happens is this. When you are using a reducing agent on this solution, the solution itself is having a purple color. So this solution is purple. So the moment you pass a reducing agent through this solution, it tends to decolorize the solution from purple to colorless substance. And what happens is this. From this compound, KMNO4, if I split this, it gives me K plus and MNO4 minus. It is this uh, ion or radical that is actually responsible for that purple color. So what happens is this. The moment this is uh, reducing agent is passed through the solution, it tends to reduce this substance into manganese ion. And this substance, this is what is responsible for the color, don't forget. When it is being reduced to this, this manganese ion is a colorless substance. So this is what happens when you use reducing agents on this substance. So it decolorizes the solution of this. Then you can also work with uh, another agent that is acidified. You can also work with acidified K2CRO2O7 solution. That is potassium heptaozodiacrylate 6 solution. You can work with that. And then what happens is this. Now, let's say you have this in this beaker K2CRO2O7. Now, the color of this is orange. And what is responsible for the orange color is uh, when you have the dissociation of this now, so when it dissociates or splits, it gives you um, CRO2 O72 minus. Now, this radical is what is responsible for the orange color, just like the KMNO4, that's the MNO4 is the one responsible for that purple color. Then this one is responsible for the orange color. So what happens is this, when you pass a reducing agent through it, it tends to change the color from orange to uh, green, okay, orange to green, in that the whole of this, which is CRO2, O72 minus, then becomes reduced to CRO3 plus. And remember, this one is responsible for the orange color, then while this one has a greenish color, okay? So that's just the twist. So you ought to know that it is only agents that tend to undergo color changes that can be used in the testing for the oxidizing as well as reducing agents okay all right so again in case you are asked a question on um, what changes is moist moist starch iodide paper black now what changes starch iodide paper black it is actually chlorine because now chlorine gas chlorine gas is a strong oxidizing agent so what happens is this it's able to oxidize the starch iodide paper and then it oxidizes it thereby um, making the starch to in turn react because after oxidizing the iodide uh, ion it oxidizes it to iodine and remember that iodine on um, starch we actually turn blue black okay so changes the paper into blue black or simply put it as black so this is an oxidizing agent so one thing you need to know is this majority of the time so we are talking about tests for the presence of agents that are oxidizing or reducing just looking at for color changes okay so it's my hope that you are able to understand what i've just explained if there are any questions that you may like to you know uh, drop you can actually drop on this comment section and then i'll be there to go through everything. If you have uh, you know any issues bothering me, 
And for those that are actually willing to drop topics that they would want me to touch, you should also drop it in the comment section. Then don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Inform your friends about it. Those that are praying for Jam 2023 and other exams such as Waik and the rest of them, just stay tuned to this channel and God bless you.